In Baldur's Gate 3, long resting is extremely important. You regain your health, spell slots, special abilities, short rests, and it advances many quests and storylines. It also refreshes merchant inventories and provides you with access to illithid abilities. But come on, do you actually need any of that stuff to clear the game, or could you make the right party work? In this video, I'm not going to benefit from long resting at all, and I'm not going to abuse any of the other ways to fully restore characters either, like traveling between two regions or switching the game difficulty off of Tactician at any point. I've played through Act 1 a lot of times now, so I decided to make this playthrough a little different, and I'm going to skip straight to level 4 without fighting or attacking at all. In fact, the only times I'm going to be in combat before level 4 is on the Prologue ship and the Druid Grove fight, but I don't need any attacks to win either of those. On the Prologue ship, I can simply lure the imps upstairs and introduce them to this intellect devourer, who is more than capable of taking them on. In the bridge, I can just run right past everything and the Prologue is clear. At the the Druid Grove, I can have Gale cast Jump on my character so I can take the high ground, then I just blow the horn over and over to give the Grove Fighters the Rallied buff for plus 8 temporary health every turn. Easy. From here, I can use a few tricks to gain a ton of experience, and the first is talking my way out of an ambush at the Blighted Village, which gets me to level 3. Then I can talk my way into the Goblin Camp, and this is where I decided to grab the Disguise Self spell for Gale. By disguising Gale as a drow, he can walk right into the Goblin Camp without even needing an ability check. And the reason this is giving me so much experience is that Baldur's Gate 3 gives you experience for each enemy that you didn't have to fight because you talked your way out of it. I wandered around the map and received some more experience from questing, from exploring in general, and then I headed to the big one, the Gith Yankee Patrol. I used a hireling that had expertise in persuasion and passed the check very easily, leveling almost all my characters to four. Seriously, Shadowheart, you're gonna be four experience short? <sighs> So I went and talked some ogres out of a fight and my whole party is now level 4 without needing to fight. After this video, I actually went and experimented a little bit with this and found a way to do it with zero ability checks. Um, so just let me know in the comments if you would want to see something like that, I can make it pretty quick. So now, with a level 4 party, what is the easiest way to reach level 5 without using any of my limited resources? The answer is definitely going to be clearing the Underdark and Grimforge. I decided to head towards the Spider Matriarch's entrance to the Underdark and I picked a fight along the way. All of my characters have high dexterity and proficiency in stealth because I want to be able to act first when combat starts. The goal is to win fights as often as possible without it ever really being a fight. To pull this off, I have an assassin rogue, a gloom stalker ranger, a shadow monk, and then my warlock has the alert feat so that they can go up in front, try to talk people out of things, and if it doesn't go well, they still get the first move. So as often as possible, I want enemies to be surprised in combat so that they lose a turn, my Gloomstalker can use their Dread Ambusher attack. It's just a free action that they get on the first round of combat, so that really helps me thin down the enemies. And all of my characters, except my Warlock, can hide as a bonus action, so it's really easy after we take some attacks to try and slip out of line of sight and hide and then let our stealth proficiency keep us hidden. By playing like this, I'm hoping that the majority of fights we will be able to take on without a scratch. And the ones where we do take some hits should be okay, because I still won't need to use any serious amounts of resources to get out of it, maybe just some health potions at the end to heal up, and we're good to go. My battle plan worked out perfectly. I was able to take out almost everything before they were done being surprised with just one enemy left, and we took that one down with some ranged attacks, and my monk went up and delivered the final blow. So now it's time to turn my attention to the spider matriarch, and I have a very specific goal for this fight, which is that I want to knock her down into the middle chasm. So I use minor illusion to lure her into position, and I use Eldritch Blast to knock her down. The other spiders I was able to take out extremely easily. My rogue has sharpshooter, so when she does land hits, they do a massive amount of damage. And she's an assassin, so they're critical hits against surprised enemies. On my monk, I'm running Tavern Brawler, which is just broken. It does so much damage, so my monk has an insanely high accuracy and amount of damage, which is perfect whenever the situation calls for a little bit more brute force. Now that I've done the prep work, my plan to clear the Underdark is easy. I'm just going to grab this little mushroom guy, Glut, and have him reanimate the Spider Matriarch's corpse into a Spore Servant, because the Spider Matriarch is a fantastic fighter, especially down here in the Underdark. The teleportation really, really helps her get around and be able to land all of her attacks. She can just teleport as a bonus action every turn. She gets two attacks, resistance to physical damage, she hits like a truck, she is 
awesome. I can't recommend this enough. It was really, really fun to be able to just run around with a giant spider down here. Plus, look at that critical hit. That is beautiful. Massive amounts of damage coming out from the spider. There's no way to heal her, so eventually she will probably go down, but by then I'll have another plan in place. Say hello to plan B. Hello, Bulette. We need to kill you, so we'll have your corpse available as a backup. Wow, I was not actually expecting it to go that smoothly. I thought for sure that he would run away or something, but he just stayed the whole time and we killed him. So this is fantastic. I headed over and I took down the spectator next using the face spider matriarch and her health's getting pretty low here. So this is definitely going to be the last fight that she's in. And I got my characters involved just in case I didn't want her to go down. I had my tavern brawler monk throw a health potion at my downed warlock which was regrettable. I knew this happened too. I saw it and I saw it on Reddit. I saw people on Reddit say not to do this and I, I just forgot. I forgot. And so that's, that's a dead warlock. Just so you know what happened, the tavern brawler feat adds damage to everything that's thrown. So I did damage to a downed character and that finished them off, but it's okay. We won the fight. I just need to use a scroll of revivify to get my warlock back. And the face spider is pretty much tapped out here. So we're going to swap the face spider matriarch out for Bulette. Bulette's a pretty great fighter too. He just is a little bit more cumbersome to use because he's got elite places instead of teleport. But he does a ton of damage. He can do damage with his jump and then also do more damage by biting. So he's got very good attacks and having him down here is going to make the rest of the Underdark really easy to clear. Bulette belly flopped our way to victory against the Dwergar at the lake and Gek Cole saw his moves and tried to copy him, but you just can't copy something this sexy on your first try, buddy. My party was pretty hurt by the end of clearing the Underdark, but I just grouped everybody up in a little diamond and threw health potions on the ground to heal us back up. Then I killed off Glut and I am ready to go into the Grim Forge. I did take a quick detour to clear out the goblin camp, but I actually made a mistake earlier in the video. When I was gaining experience by talking to people and getting out of fights, I told Minthara I would raid the Druid's Grove with her and I was going to kill the goblins there, but that attack doesn't trigger unless you take a long rest. So by by accident, I've doomed the Druid's Grove and the Tieflings because I can't find Minthara anywhere. I'm pretty sure there's nothing I can do about this without long resting, so that's a little oopsie moment, but nothing I can do about it, but move on. Down in the Grim Forge, I stole a Rune Powder Barrel, which is a massive explosion, and pickpocketed a Rune Powder Vial, so I have even a little more. Then I picked a couple fights to gain experience, and I actually got in a tough situation with these Magma Methods, which is embarrassing, because they're very weak, and I have lost a character and had to use another scroll of Revivify. So, you know, it happens. Just a little embarrassing, but we made it to level five with that one, so we're ready to go take on Grim and then take on all of the dwarves. Dwergar and Nier. With a party that is primarily piercing damage, um, something like Grim would be pretty tricky to deal with if I wasn't completely willing to just manhandle the fight and turn it into a joke. So I used the Gith Yankee psionic leap ability to have my monk jump all the way back up to the top after starting the fight. Then I had her go into sneak mode and jump back down because she has feather fall. So she'll stay in sneak mode. Grim can only take damage if he's been superheated by lava in the last two turns. So I just had my monk stand at the bottom, just twisting the valve every once in a while whenever the lava flow shut off. And I had the rest of my party standing up on the cliffside, just shooting at Grimm until the fight was over. So, you know, if you're new here and weren't expecting to see me cheese the game, then you should know that 
that's never what you should expect on my channel because I'm always willing to cheese the game. And this isn't going to be the last cheese in this video. The next one is drastically more fun. It goes a little off the rails and I had to improvise a bit, but I am very happy with the end result. This fight at the Grim Forge, assuming that you choose to fight, can actually be pretty tricky. So I used Minor Illusion to lure one of the guards over to the edge and threw them off. And I got a little confused because they tried to make me talk my way out of it. So I just went for it and I just rolled the dice and I actually got a critical success. But I realized what my mistake was after a little while. I accidentally had left the game in turn-based mode when doing the throw. And all I need to do to not need to talk to these guys right before they plummet to their death is turn off turn-based mode when I'm throwing them off the edge. Apparently they don't get mad when you fail to throw them off the edge, so it, it doesn't seem like there's anything that could possibly go wrong here. I just lure them over with Minor Illusion. I throw them until I get a success, which I only failed one time because I'm using a Tavern Brawler 21 Strength Monk because of my elixirs. And I can just shove them all off, throw them in the lava. It was a good time. Once I had taken all of them out, I went ahead and fought near. 1v4, and he didn't stand a chance. There was literally no way he was going to come out of this one alive. And with that, I was ready to head to the mountain pass, but the game unfortunately forces a long rest here. So in order to make sure I don't benefit from the long rest at all, I checked over all my characters to see what abilities I've used so far. The only character resources that I've used are on my Githyanki Monk, where I've used two key points and the Githyanki Jump ability. I made sure my party was full health before the rest, and in the morning, I wasted two key points and the jump ability, so I've gained absolutely no benefit from this long rest whatsoever. So it's on with the adventure into the Githyanki Crash, where every single plan that I had is going to fail miserably, and I'm going to have to do something different. Love that for me. I snuck into the Githyanki Crash because I, I just, I've actually never talked to those guards. I have no idea how it goes. I've snuck in every single playthrough I've ever done. But I got the waypoint and fast traveled everybody else in, and then I ran around and turned off all the lights so that I can use use stealth more effectively. And you can see my characters can just sit in stealth forever in front of pretty much anybody. We would have to roll two ones because we're rolling with advantage on our stealth checks. So we would literally have to roll double ones, which is possible, but very unlikely. And on my halfling, I would get to re-roll the one. So it's even less likely. So here's my big idea. I want to attack the Gith Yankee and then use stealth to evade them and lure all the Gith Yankee in the crash into the final room. But the sad reality is that it just isn't going to work. Maybe if I wanted to commit several hours to trying to pull this off, I could eventually get it. But the problem is that when my characters are in sneak mode, the Gith Yankee will go and examine their last location. And if they can't find anybody, the combat will end. Even when I was more careful to make sure at least one character stayed in combat, the Gith Yankee would get stuck in the crowded hallways or confused and they would run the wrong direction, go in the wrong room. They would go too far away from the battle and drop off. I even encountered a ridiculous glitch where my characters were just constantly dropping in and out of combat over and over again and the sounds that it was making were insanely irritating and I couldn't have that. The whole thing was just a nightmare so I decided to move on to plan B and plan B is to have my monk pick them up to use them as an improvised attack. Then I can fast travel while I'm carrying them and it brings them with me to the waypoint while also canceling my attack so we don't start fighting. I ran around the crash collecting as many Gith Yankee as I could. Some of them would just teleport back to their starting spot for some reason, but most of them stayed when I brought them to the waypoint. I filled up this hallway with the majority of the Gith Yankee in the crash, and I put my rune powder bomb down on the ground with the rune powder vial on top. And obviously you know what happens next. No, I'm pretty sure it worked. Time for the boss fight of the Gith Yankee Crash, but because I made the rest of the crash easier by just blowing everybody up with rune powder, I'm going to make the final fight harder to compensate by adding more people to the fight than they're supposed to be. I started off with a bunch of sneak attacks and retreated out of the room and onto the bridge, and my monk is using Pass Without Trace, so we have really, really high stealth right now, and we would pretty much need to roll a 1 in order to get detected. But because I didn't kill everybody in the Gith Yankee Crash with my rune powder bomb, there's soldier 
soldier is waiting for me at the end of the bridge and they're going to join the fight as well. Now my party is pinched between two groups of enemies and our only hope is really to stay hiding in stealth. But the problem with a bridge is there's not really very many ways to stay away from people. And although it would be hard for them to detect me by seeing me, if they get too close, they can detect me simply because they are right next to me. They just automatically are like, oh, look, you know, there's a person right here touching my knee. Must have been the wind. To mitigate this, I tried to enter stealth a little bit away from where I actually had my party member standing, but it was just a matter of time. One of the Gith Yankee just had the sixth sense and he knew exactly where to run, even while he was saying he can't seem to find them. He walked right up to my warlock and then went and found a second member of my party. This is when everything started to go wrong. So I'm pretty sure this fight is an easy win. Before I started trying to kill the Githyanki Kresh, I learned, and many of you maybe know this already, but I learned that the Dwergar can cast invisibility over and over again. It's not tied to short rest or long rest or any, they can just use it over and over, which is awesome. So I used invisibility to sneak into the room where the boss is, and I attacked the statue until I managed to knock it loose. And since I was able to knock it loose, I opened up the trap door and put a couple of chests nearby so that I can block it and use it as a fallback position if I ever got into a bad situation. Turns out I did get into a bad situation. I'm actually really annoyed that the commander decided to run away because I think I had this one. I think I had them both, but the the Inquisitor stayed and I took out the Inquisitor from my little hidey hole. Oh god, look at my face. I went to the bridge and revived all of my party members, then circled back around to the commander and dealt with them with an Eldritch Blast into the chasm. I grouped my party up and chucked some health potions so we're all nice and healthy again and we are all set for Act 1. In Act 1, I made a mistake and told Minthara I would attack the Druid Grove with her, but the assault happens after a long rest, so when I get to Moonrise Towers and see Minthara again, something very strange happens. Also, all my characters have permanent bless right now from the Dream Visitor, so that's a nice little bonus that I'm going to have for the entirety of Act 2, as long as I don't have any deaths, of course. I headed into Act 2 through the Grim Forge and quickly ran into some Harpers who were having a bad time. We're all flattered that you'd invite us to join you, but I'm just really busy right now. This fight isn't difficult, but that didn't stop one of my party members from stating the obvious. I'm done. I can't wait to sleep. My warlock used Cloud of Daggers to quickly clean up a fight at Last Light Inn because I'm about to level up and my warlock gets their spell slots back when leveling. My only other noteworthy improvement from leveling up for my party was Action Surge for my rogue. From here, I decided to have my Dwergar turn invisible and just run all the way to Moonrise Towers alone to get the fast travel waypoint. Now it's time for some shopping. The merchants at Moonrise Towers have pretty good gear, so I'm going to take it all. I can just split stacks of gold in the merchant's inventory and steal them in bite-sized pieces. Since I can turn invisible as many times as I want, NPC sightlines don't matter. It's a bit tedious, but eventually I can steal everything that I want. 
When I was done stealing, I headed in to meet Kethrick, and that's when something extremely unexpected happened. I haven't seen Minthara since I told her I would raid the goblin camp with her, and she is apparently following up on that right now. She left where she was standing to come over and talk to me immediately. Then she told me that she would come to my camp tonight to celebrate, and the screen just blacked out and came back with my character just sleeping. Just asleep on the ground right here and they would not wake up like i know i named my character sleepy but i didn't think i was going to get put into a permanent sleep because of a cutscene. it's very very weird i tried to use the help action to get them back up and the game was like no you can't you can't do that you can't help them to their feet they're sleeping their name is sleepy they're sleeping you can't do that so i tried shooting them with a bow because damage wakes you up no nope, just 15 damage still sleeping permanent glitchy sleep then i tried to use one of my two short rests that i get for the whole game and that didn't do anything either. So I went for a punch and it's just not awake. Just there's absolutely nothing I can do. So I knocked the character out and then I was able to help Sleepy back to her feet because we got an adventure. We need to keep moving. There's no time for rests. I don't know what caused this. I mean, you know, obviously it has something to do with the fact that I didn't actually raid the goblin camp. It's just a really, really weird interaction that came about because of just not taking any long rests at all. And it cost me a couple potions, but otherwise not that big of a deal. I sent my Dwergar back on the road, invisible to explore the rest of the map, get waypoints for us so that we can get around more easily. And I actually got the Gith Yankee ambush to just pop up without getting into combat with them. So that's going to make it a lot easier to fight them. Having all these waypoints is going to make it easier for me to get around the map. And it was kind of just weird, like how many little things were happening. Like Karnas just kind of spawned in, but but weird. Like I don't, he was a different color. And I don't know if that was just the game loading them in or it was something else. I have no idea. I came across Lazelle who was just kind of standing around and at one HP and I saved her by coming up with my moon lantern and, and then I walked away and you know decided we'll just let nature take its course. I feel like she should know better than to just stand out here. I don't feel responsible for what's happening. I feel a little responsible but not enough. But nothing I can do about it now so I decided to just keep running around getting my waypoints running past encounters that are supposed to do things but since I'm invisible Nothing happens and I can just fast travel my party and past them and see how it changes things. Before going any further though, I decided that it would be a good idea to go take out Karnas because I would like to get the moon lantern that he has. I engaged combat with my assassin rogue because she gets her action points back in the first combat round. You know, if she lives until her turn, which she did not because Karnas one shot her as soon as the fight started because he has the alert feet and goes really, really fast in combat and doesn't get surprised. Bit of an unfortunate start, but we'll make it work. I had my ranger throw a health potion at my rogue to get her back on her feet, and I really need my rogue in this round of combat because as an assassin, she has critical strikes against anybody who is surprised. So I decided to use action surge to make sure that I could do a ton of damage this round. Action surge only comes back on short rest, so that's, I mean, that's pretty much it for a while. But I think it was well worth it. I need to make sure that I can take out all of Karnas' troops before before I start the fight against Karnas because Karnas is pretty strong. There's a lot of health there and obviously can one-shot my characters. Since the rest of them are surprised, they didn't get to take their turns and I got super lucky and Karnas missed his attack on my ranger. I took advantage of the opportunity and I was able to take out the rest of the soldiers that turn before any of them got to do anything. So now it's just a four-on-one fight. I knocked Karnas away from my party, and then I decided to have my monk run up into the front line because my monk has a lot of health. I shot an arrow of ice, hoping that I could get Karnas to slip and fall down, but didn't luck out on that shot. I did as much damage as I could, and it turned out that I did luck out because Karnas slipped and fell down when trying to move. After all my characters took a round of attacks, we had Karnas down to 70 health, so we would need at least one more round to win the fight. So I decided to use Counterspell against Karnas Sanctuary cast, so that way they can't be protected, and that did the trick. We managed to take the fight out without taking too much damage, no character deaths, which is good because everybody 
gets to keep the bless that they have. And the pixie inside Karnas Moon Lantern rewarded us for freeing her, and my whole party is now protected against the Shadow Curse without needing a Moon Lantern. So I can actually have them spread out in combat again and use better battle tactics. And I'm definitely going to need to be using better battle tactics because the Gith Yankee ambush is up next. Now, I'm not really high enough level for this fight, but since my party is protected against the Shadow Curse, I just need to lure the Gith Yankee away from the protection of their Moon Lanterns to even the odds. Add on the fact that I'm ambushing them instead of the other way around, and this fight is stacked in my favor. The two closest Gith Yankee soldiers died before they had a chance to fight back, and I lured the rest of them into the shadows where they would take more and more necrotic damage each turn from the Shadow Curse. But some bad positioning on my part led to my monk getting Eldritch Blasted right off the rooftop and downed. When I tried to throw a health potion to revive them, it didn't work. Probably because they're on stairs and potions act kind of weird on ramps and stairs when you're throwing them. So I threw a second potion, which also failed. So I decided to use Healing Word to get my monk back up. Thankfully, my monk has high strength and was able to jump back onto the safety of the rooftop. The Githyanki are now taking damage from the Shadow Curse, and I tucked all my characters away on the rooftop where they would be nice and safe, and we are just going to wait it out until the Githyanki are on death's door. The Shadow Curse does more and more damage every single turn, so once they were ready to get finished off, I sent my monk up onto the top and fired an arrow. I wanted to deal the killing blow myself because I was worried I wouldn't get experience otherwise. After I took both of them out, they resurrected as Shadow Cursed Undead, so I will have to take them out again, but they're much weaker now, so it shouldn't be a problem. Now what will be a problem is that the boss lady decided to figure out how to get up onto the roof and absolutely annihilates my rogue with one massive Eldritch Blast. But she's very, very close to death right now, so I just need to figure out how to do enough damage to her this turn, and we'll be in good shape. I jumped my monk in behind her and went for two punches to do pretty good damage. I had my ranger use Hunter's Mark, and my ranger can do a lot of damage and gets to attack twice per turn. But tragically, my second attack was a critical miss. I didn't think my warlock would be able to do enough damage, so I decided to have my warlock get my rogue back on her feet because my rogue can fire off an attack as a bonus action. And if we can proc sneak attack, then that should do a lot of damage and we should be good. But I was going to be attacking with disadvantage because it's too dark. So what I did is I had my Dwergar send the Moon Lantern over to my monk who has already taken their turn, but they can drop the Moon Lantern on the ground, which illuminates the area so that I am no longer attacking with disadvantage. But it didn't do enough. So I had my Warlock drink a potion of speed and fire off an Eldritch Blast for the killing blow. Felt kind of bad to use a potion of speed to deal six more damage damage, but in my head I was just imagining the Gith Yankee taking like six attacks on one turn and insta-killing my monk, and I just, I don't want to lose my permanent bless. I'm not ready for that yet. But I had finally taken down all the Gith Yankee and, as is tradition, grouped everybody up and threw a bunch of health potions to top us all off. I decided while I was in the area, I might as well take down Thizibald Thorm, and I thought maybe I could take him down with a dialogue option to make it easier for myself. That did not work out, so I am going to first focus on taking out the blighted patrons and various bar customers that he has milling about before trying to fight him directly. Since Thizibald Thorm doesn't have any attacks that have any significant amounts of range, I'm hoping that I can just run away from him and just do hit and runs for the entirety of the fight. The Blighted Patrons all have Undead Fortitude, so after you kill them they regain a health, which is a little annoying, but not too bad. Thizibald himself, when you hit him with elemental damage, it gives him a new ability that enhances his special brew, which hopefully we're never going to have to see what that does. But I don't think I had the right angle for my knockback on the ramp, so I wasn't able to push him away. I got a lot of damage down on the last Blighted Barman before trying to get just out of sight range and go into sneak mode and hope that he doesn't see me there. What if it's worth the cost? 
Mission accomplished, hiding successful. As soon as it was my turn, I rolled a critical fail on my next hiding check, so I am going to have to move, but at least he didn't get to attack me with whatever he's got in that tank there. I took down the blighted barman and I started my game of run away from the horrifying giant monster before he burps on you. You asshole. Well played, sir. Ugh, oh, I was so close. It was almost flawless. I got everybody back on their feet. We jumped up to the top where he didn't have enough movement to get all the way to us. And when he was on the ramp, I knocked him back down pretty much securing my victory in this fight. He made one more run up the ramp and I tried to knock him down again, but my reverberation actually procced and it knocked him prone, which I think took priority over the knockback, but it doesn't matter, he's basically dead. So I just went ahead and fired a shot. Victory is ours. We healed up and then got in position to fight against the next Thorm, the Surgeon. Except that this one wasn't so much of a battle as it was just an execution. My rogue has the Risky Ring, which gives advantage on all attack rolls, and as a rogue, that means lots of sneak attacks, and since I have Sharpshooter, I get to add plus 10 damage to all of my hits. So I'm just doing stupid amounts of damage with my rogue now. And as awesome as my rogue is doing, I think my ranger does even more damage, because I had them drink an elixir of bloodlust, so they get an additional action whenever they get a kill, and since they have two attacks per action, this is a massive boost. As long as one of my first two attacks is a killing blow, I'm attacking four times per turn. And the attacks are usually doing upwards of 20 damage per hit, so that means I'm pumping out about 80 damage per turn with my ranger. I finished killing all of the sisters before even they had a chance to go, um, so now we're just going to be focusing on Malice Thorm, and we have high ground and are pretty far away. Malice used his entire turn to just revive one of the sisters, which just gives me another target to kill with my ranger so that I can attack more times. And then on his next turn, he, he used his turn to revive the sister, so I just kept raining arrows down on him, and it, it was not a fight, it was an execution. Speaking of executions, the greedy Thorm met a similar fate when I dropped the weakened floorboards, sent them down into a little timeout while I killed the floating skulls. Once all the skulls were dead, I went down to check on my prisoner and I found this hideous, disgusting creature, and really the best I can do now is a mercy killing, but since I don't have a clear line of sight, I opted for a somewhat less than merciful killing that involved fire. Once I did have a clear shot, I ended the greedy Thorm's lifelong adventure with an arrow to the knee. My Warlock is all out of spell slots again, but that is nothing that a quick level up can't fix. My entire party is very well geared for stealth, and I just went ahead and used my Halfling and just walked right through all the shadows because they just can't see me. I don't have to try and evade them at all. Just walk right through, good to go. I use my Halfling again in the Mirror Image Challenge because I am really good at assassinating people. So I managed to get a surprise round and just absolutely obliterated myself with critical strikes. It did take two turns, but it wasn't ever going to be close. The most interesting encounter in Shars Gauntlet was with Yurgir because I decided to fight him. I just felt like fighting, but look at how big this guy is. I could stack all of my party members on top of each other and we only equal one of him. So I rang this bell Balthazar gave me to call in a big friend of my own. And now it's a fair fight. Except it's really not that fair of a fight because I still do a monstrous amount of damage with my attacks. And although your gear can turn invisible, he doesn't move when he does it, so I can just fire an area of effect attack at where he was standing. And there he is, we can finish him off now, no problem. And he spits a whole bunch of bombs around when he gets to low health, so I get to go and pick those up and maybe use them later. And these bombs do a lot of damage, so I had my monk go around picking up as many as I could. I also decided to try picking some up that were already triggered and said they were going to explode because I haven't tried it before. 
Um, which it turns out that they they are going to explode. They're definitely going to blow up in my character's inventory. Fortunately for me, my big meaty friend is going to take all of the enemy attention while I get myself completely exploded by picking up bombs that I just really had no business picking up whatsoever. And he buys enough time for everybody to get back on their feet, good to go. Eventually though, he actually takes enough damage that he goes completely enraged and becomes an enemy to me as well. So now I've got to take him out, but again, he did his job. He distracted and I've got all these bombs now, so I just went ahead and used one of them to deal the final blow. With that wrapped up, I headed into Shadowfell to deal with Balthazar and the Night Song, but I figured I'd just take the easy way out this time. First, I stole his Potion of Speed because you can never have enough of them. Then I lured him over to the edge and Eldritch blasted him into the void. I freed the Night Song and we are ready to take the fight straight to Kethric Thorm, and I do mean straight to Kethric Thorm. I recruited Jahira before scaling Moonrise Tower, sneaking my way over to the doorway leading to the top of the tower, and I quickly took down the weak troops guarding it. I'm sure the Harpers are going to do just fine taking on the rest of Moonrise Tower without me. Maybe. I, I don't know. They'll figure something out. They're all gonna die. My monk took some pretty big damage early in the fight and was completely surrounded, but as a shadow monk, I can just shadow step to safety as a bonus action. I sent Jahara to the front lines as a panther to keep Kethric busy. Honestly, that could have been a lot worse. Yeah, that's, that's more like it. That's more of what I was expecting. And that was the end of the combat? Wait, and the cutscene got skipped? I don't really know what's going on. That guy is such an asshole. That was literally the last thing that he did before combat was over. Just annihilate my monk. Fighting against Ketherick Thorm again in the Mind Flayer colony was really the only fight in Act 2 where I felt like my back was against the wall. I can't afford to just spam spells because I'm playing an RPG and I desperately need to hoard every resource I have until the last 90 seconds of the boss fight in Act 3, right? Pretty sure that's right. That being said, I decided to use some of my special arrows to wrap this fight up as quickly as possible. Phase 1 of the fight just isn't really that bad, but Phase 2 can get out of hand very quickly if I'm not careful. That's because in phase two, Kethric has an arena-wide attack that can pull everybody towards him. I used my ranger's last level one spell slot for Hunter's Mark to increase damage as much as possible, and I drank a potion of speed for the extra action point. I used special arrows for all four of my attacks so I could pump out as much damage as possible. I usually try to take out weak enemies first and then focus on the boss, but Kethric was looking pretty hurt, so I thought it would be a good idea to ignore the Necromites and just finish him off as quick as possible. I literally just spamming as many special arrows as possible, both from my Ranger and from my Rogue. My Monk dealt the final blow, and with that, we're ready to start making our way towards Baldur's Gate. There's only one fight standing between me and Act 3, and here's the highlights. You really waited until now to use that? Uh. All right, so at this point, the game forces me to take a long rest. So let's take inventory. Let's look and see all of my characters. What have we used and what is still available? I have one short rest left to use. That will give my rogue slash fighter her action surge back. So she hasn't used anything. My Gith Yankee Leap is used up and not coming back on my monk and my ranger has used four level one spell slots, and that is it. My warlock hasn't used anything because I keep getting all my spell slots back when I level up. 
So I went ahead and reset my characters to the same state they were at before the rest, so we still have not benefited at all from long resting or any other cheesy method of fully restoring characters. The only thing that I didn't reset was Action Surge because I went ahead and just burned my last short rest so that we are completely ready to go into Act 3. How many and I have made it to the full restore tank. Hmm. Nah, I don't need it. I'm trying to beat Baldur's Gate 3 without benefiting from any long rests or from any of the cheesy methods of fully restoring characters, and my party just finished their second short rest and needs to take on Act 3. But by this point in the adventure, my party would be beyond exhausted and ready for this long day to end, so we won't be wasting any time, we're headed straight to Gortash to make a deal. From this point on, we're on the path of least resistance, whatever gets us to bed soonest. Now I normally wouldn't do this, but when I was recording this video, I was very tired and kind of over it, which I honestly felt like happened to be perfect for this video because my characters would be so over this adventure by now. And with my attitude just kind of matching that, I really felt like it would cause the run to have the flow that made the most sense, which uh, was pretty much just me rushing to the end as quick as I could while also forgetting a ton of important details and having to backtrack because I was tired and I was just having a hard time. I tried to talk my way past the guard, but my characters are a little underleveled right now and I just don't have enough charisma to get past that 30 check. So I tried another one and I couldn't get past the 25. So we're jumping off the cliff and running our way to Gortash on foot from there. Together we rule Faerun as kings. Yeah, man, whatever you say. I, I'm good with it. We can do whatever. Um, I guess I'll defeat Orin and we'll be allies. You got my oath. Let's do it. So I headed down into the sewers and headed for the entrance to Orin's base. You have to help me, please. Okay, so I guess the kid needs help. It's probably Orin, but... I haven't seen this one before, so here we go. Uh, there was a lady, uh, Orin. She said that when she catches me, she's going to to eat me too. She's coming. Yeah, I don't want to deal with this. This is this is definitely Orin. It's got to be. So you better start running. Show your true face. Yeah, there it is. To the surprise of no one, Orin's back to her old tricks. Hey, Orin, I'm here to kill you, so let's, uh, let's get this started. You must be sharpened before you set your edge against my skin. <laughs> no, no. So anyways, I forgot it's a whole thing to get into Orin's hideout because she's not going to let me just walk in and fight her to the death, unfortunately. So we headed off to the open hand temple to try and solve some murders. Look, Investigator, Brilgor might have been a criminal, but- Enough, Yanis. Listen to your- The evidence speaks- Shitey little elephant. I could not agree more. That elephant is the worst. Worst investigator, worst personality, zero out of 10 stars, would not recommend for your next crime. Unless you're committing the crime, in which case, I guess that would probably be the ideal investigator. I guess technically I'm committing a crime right now because it says it's stealing to get into this chest, but it's for the greater good, so I'm pretty sure it's okay. The reason I need to investigate these crimes is, well, it's like a whole thing, and I guess I'll just explain it while I kill some doppelgangers. Basically, Orin doesn't want to fight me until I've proven myself. She wants me to kill a bunch of people, but what I'm going to do instead is find some other guy who's been killing people, steal his body part collection, because that sounds easier and faster. So I just need to solve this case because it'll lead me to the murderer who has all of the bloody limbs and stuff that I'm going to need. A miss, good. Another miss, huge. Okay, we'll fire a shot to finish them off with my Gloom Stalker and start working on the next one. All right, let's go to town on them. I'm hoping I can finish them off. They'll get, they'll get one turn right now. Okay, oh, that's so close, that's so close. Okay, whatever, they'll, they'll do some damage, we'll use some potions, it's fine. Oh, <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> they, why did they die? Why did they kill themselves? 
Oh, 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 oh. It's because, it's because they, I succeeded on the saving throw, so they took psychic damage. Oh, that's awesome. That's so awesome. Okay, cool. I've got a flowery key and we can continue the investigation. I found a list of targets and some of them were marked killed and some of them were still alive. So that gives me locations to go look for the assassin. All right, one last blood stain to check out in this yeah, room and then we should be able to go start floor. looking for the assassin. We have a ranger survival check that should be pretty easy. <laughs> no, please. Oh my gosh. Uh, I'm gonna use inspiration and just have it. I only got it by one. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, we, there's a body under a bed and I can't find it if I'm not, I, I'm too tired to have the patience for this. Another case closed, another bottle open. Huzzah to Valeria! I'm not going to be able to deal with this. I'm, there's no way. Sec. I recognize that face. I just want this conversation Why to be over. Why must you busybodies insist on interrupting a perfectly good night? Fine. If you doubt my conclusions, out with it. What have you found? I'm gonna kill the elephant later. I'm 100% gonna kill this elephant. A ball plot. Devella's been harping on about. Move on. I assumed it was Get just it about. Over with. <gasps> I have Fine. the evidence. I'll bite. Watch. No need to wave documents at oh me. Oh my god. Devella is going to be a oh my god, this elephant. You seem to be on an this elephant is the worst. I don't. Wavelength. I'm gonna kill it. Why I'm gonna kill the elephant later. Out? It's not gonna be She'll my be fault. The, elf it, the elephant drove me to it. The other potential victims will be at risk. Could you warn them? Of course, I'll go warn them because nobody here can do their jobs. I, I'm i not saving anybody. I'm just, I'm getting this over with. This guy has the parts I need. I feel like this entire encounter could have gone better if I remembered I had a character who can just turn invisible anytime and sight lines didn't matter. But I forgot, so I fired an arrow of darkness so that I could try and have some and somewhere to hide from all the sight lines. And luckily for me, my rogue didn't actually get pulled into the combat in here, even though I just was not in sneak mode when it started. But I just went and I stole all of the things from this guy's pocket that I could possibly get. Now that I have a bunch of body parts in a bag, I'm gonna go to the murder tribunal to impress them so that I can get an amulet that will let me go and fight Orin. Uh, I did manage to get out of the fight by just taking invisibility potions and just having everybody run away. And once they felt like they were done looking for me, we were all clear to go straight to the mur murder tribunal. At the murder tribunal, I need to convince them that I am in fact a murderer. And that requires me to do some deception checks where I say, yes, I absolutely was the killer of these body parts in the bag I brought to you. And the checks were pretty high, but I did have pretty high deception. I had plus 11 to 14. So, so I was clearing these pretty easily. Reverence. Enter the Dreadlord's abattoir and submit to his will. All right, Valeria, your day of reckoning is here. If you were a better investigator, this wouldn't have to happen, but you're literally the worst and I don't have the patience for you right now. So we are doing this the easy way. Path of least resistance, here we go. Do not listen to this ancient fuck. Free me at once. A new unholy assassin. All right, Orin, we're coming for you. I'm invisible. Your people can't see me. I'm running past everything to the waypoint. Once I got to the waypoint, I was able to fast travel the rest of my party members in, and we're gonna go try and take down Orin as quickly and easily as possible. Possible. I snuck my way back to Orin's chambers and I took out all of the soldiers that she had in there first. And once I had all of them taken out, I went back up to the top and I took all of the arrows of Roaring Thunder that I have and split them up across my characters. So now I can take out all of these sanctuary protected ball worshippers. Level up! 
This is a pretty big level up for me because it gives my rogue an extra attack each round because I am reaching level five as a fighter. The last sanctuary protected ball worshiper was kind of a pain. He kept saving against the uh, knockback effect, but eventually I got him off the ledge and then fired some regular arrows at the only other soldier that Orin had there. And we were clear. It was just us against Orin, which I thought was going to be a good thing, but it ended up being <laughs> extremely unfortunate and tedious oh my gosh finally thank goodness okay all right last ball invoker is going down and it is just gonna be Orin now and we are going to abuse stealth the entire fight path of least resistance you can't make me play fair i'm not doing it Orin went into her slayer form so now all i need to do is get through all of those unstoppable stacks which are preventing damage from being more than one and hiding up here on the balcony she she can't figure out how to get up here as long as we use our bonus action to go into stealth every turn so i just left my warlock out of this fight they're the only one that doesn't have the option to go into hide as a bonus action but little did i know i, I just i okay you guys are gonna have to tell me in the comments if this is a bug or if i just misunderstand this fight entirely but i thought that if if she didn't have any allies left, then she would stop getting unstoppable stacks at the end of every combat round. But that's not what happened. Orin got Boon of the Unstoppable at the end of every single combat round for the entire fight. So please, if I am misunderstanding something, please correct me. I need to learn. But from what I understand about the fight, I'm pretty sure that w just whatever happened was a bug and that maybe I should have left one person alive in the fight so that the fight could adjust and be like, oh, okay, everybody's dead now. I don't really know. If I'm being perfectly honest with you, it seems very fair of the game to fight back against me with this kind of shenanigans because of all of the various shenanigans that I use against it. So I can't really be mad, but I was tired and you know, it took a long time, a lot longer than I was hoping for it to take. But at no point was Orin's AI able to figure out that it should come up here and find us. So the fight was trivial. It was just very tedious as well tedious and long blood to blood but whatever i am one step closer to taking a nap i have her nether stone and i can just go to the nether brain now i'm level nine but that doesn't matter i'm gonna go i we're gonna go and we're gonna do it it's gonna be fine i did the bare minimum to save this kiddo which is unlocking it and then left i didn't want to talk i am moving right along since i was already down here i went over to where all of these little brain cranium rats are and i shot some fire surface down on the ground and just let them run into it killing themselves for the most part and i grab the waypoint so once i go talk to gortash i can just fast travel down here and we will be going to the nether brain hey gortash what's the plan first we take Baldur's gate then Faerun. all of toril will soon follow a thousand kingdoms at our command holy shit that sounds like a lot of work when will we have time for sleep gortash when will we have time for sleep I've said it before, but we are on the path of least resistance. I turned invisible with my Dwergar and just ran her all the way through to where Gortash was waiting for me. I failed the first ability check to try and dominate the brain, but then something happened that made me just like, I really considered it because we would be so tired. We're so tired and we could just bow down before the brain and just could just be done could be done and it could be nap time forever but that that didn't feel that that might have been the right ending for the video but it didn't feel right because i i don't like to lose is really all it is and that felt like losing plus if i had given up right here i wouldn't have ended up coming up with a better ending for the video which i did i think the ending for this video is fantastic i think you're gonna fucking love it i really love it but maybe i was just sleep delirious when i was finishing the playthrough. I don't know. We'll see. You let me know. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so tired. Also, something I definitely didn't think would happen on this video is I didn't think I would nat 20 the uh, check to dominate the brain, which gives it a lower health 
pool when we finally get to it, which is nice. That, that will just make the fight just a touch easier. Here we go, path of least resistance. You know the drill by now. Running right on through, and we are gonna be climbing up this brainstem in no time. I found a potion of angelic slumber here, which I am not going to drink because we've made it this far without benefiting from long rests. We're gonna finish it up. I wish I could tell you that I perfectly navigated the battlefield up here to get past all the enemies, but the truth is that I got impatient, started the channel before I should have, forgot about how mine players have counterspell, my ranger got annihilated by magic missile, I forgot about counterspell again, but I did manage to get my ranger back up in the darkness, only for her to get smacked down by an enemy with Devil's Sight, which I hadn't been paying attention to. Look, it was a mess, but I eventually did manage to get all my characters through the portal to take on this brain. The nether brain started the fight off missing 90 health because of that nat 20 that I managed to roll against it. But with my party under leveled, the reaction that it has to taking damage is actually kind of gonna be a problem if we're just getting blasted by it. And I didn't actually know what I was going to do to deal with it, but I just decided to fire off a 40% chance of success slow and it, it landed. So now the nether brain can't use reactions anymore and that makes it basically defenseless. I used Shadow Step to get my monk in range so I could start punching this thing. And my assassin was landing a massive amount of critical hits and I was using uh, all of the special arrows that I have. I was just maxing out the damage as much as I possibly could. But while I was doing all of this damage, I was thinking to myself, what do I do for the final blow? What do I do for that last point of damage to really really let this story come to a satisfying end. And then I realized what I had to do. The dungeon master turned to my monk and said, the nether brain has been devastated by your attacks and victory is assured with your next strike. How will you vanquish this great foe? And my monk said, I reach into my pack with the last of my strength. My eyelids are heavy and threatening to close, but my hand grasps firmly onto the weapon that will bring this long day to its end. I pull out my potion of angelic slumber, and as I drift off to sleep, I toss it with all my might at the nether brain. The last thing I hear before drifting to sleep is a shattering of glass and splashing of liquid that sounds like the sweetest lullaby I had ever heard. I suppose there is more work to do now. What first? Hm. Last time I was there, I was poisoned near to death. Still, a little more restful than this place. There is no harm in taking a moment to honor the fallen. Then, quite honestly, to sleep.